and 1848. If you want your deposits in the Bahamian banking system safe, to be protected from the next banking collapse, both risk and moral hazard must be removed. That will require the return to Bahamian depositors of title to their money. The money in your check account must once again be yours. <coughs> now the prospects for the U.S. dollar are not looking good either. The Federal Reserve Bank continues to print money to support government overspending and the effects of the money already printed have not yet worked themselves through into wages and prices. So the money supply continues to increase and as the banks begin to lend once again, the rate of increase will accelerate enormously. The value of the U.S. dollar will then plummet to new and unprecedented lows. Do we want the Bahamian dollar to plummet as well? I certainly hope not. The cost of living will skyrocket. The social and economic consequences are unthinkable. If we wish to protect the Bahamian dollar, we have little choice but to sever our tie from the U.S. dollar. To make our banking and monetary system completely safe, the Bahamian government must also enact new legislation. To make UK banks safe, Lord Caithness put a bill that I drafted into the House of Lords on January 30th, 2008. The bill was not enacted and expired at the end of the last parliament. Had it been enacted, the US UK banks would not have failed. In this parliament, a new bill has already been introduced in the House of Commons to re return title to depositors, and the Earl of Caithness is ready to introduce another bill to the House of Lords following the debate on the banking system. It will make a good template for legislation in the Bahamas, because the Bahamian law is, is based on British law. And I have copies of the draft bill with me, which I'm happy to make available, should they wish a model to use. The passage of a Bahamian bill to return title to depositors will reverse the mistaken judgments of 1811 and 1848. Then your check account deposits will once more belong to you. It will be your money, not the bank's money. Banks will then have a fiduciary responsibility to you. They will not be able to lend your money. Only you can do that. You will, of course, have to pay for the services of storing and distributing your money. Storing your money has never been free. You've paid for it through inflation. By far the largest producer of inflation is bank lending. That will stop. The only inflation produced after that will be from government printing money. The current rate of inflation is in excess of 3% per year. No bank will charge you 3% per year to store your money for most likely you'll be paying about 1% or even less. In the absence of government printing of new money, you will be actually saving purchasing power by paying for storage. You are currently paying distribution fees. You pay for deposits, you pay for checks. That will continue. Banks will not be able to lend your deposits. They will set up funds in which you may buy shares or units. And these funds will then make investments. They will invest the money you transfer to them when you buy shares or units. That's how you save. Your money will come out of your check account and enter the check account of the fund in which you invest. Total deposits will not change. Under the new legislation, each bank will be required to maintain its own account. Then when you pay bank fees, the, that payment will leave your account and enter the account of the bank. Total deposits will not change. The payment dollar will not be being debased then the money supply can be accurately measured and controlled. Once the government has enacted this new legislation and banks can no longer lend depositors funds, unless the central banks print new money, there will be no inflation in the Bahamian banking and monetary system. <coughs> Do you realize what that means? The Bahamian banking system will then become the strongest banking system in the world. The Bahamas will not need to call upon the IMF to bail it out ever. The Bahamas could then withdraw from the IMF. <coughs> Why do I suggest that? Not many are aware that under the rules of the IMF, members may not back their currencies with gold. The Bahamas <coughs> will then re 
return to the gold system if it wished. As a result, the Bahamian currency could become in demand as a reserve currency. It certainly would be a safe haven. The financial services sector would boom. Investment <coughs> in the Bahamas would increase significantly. Other currencies will continue to depreciate. The Bahamian dollar will not. The price of all imports will decrease. The price of foodstuffs, gasoline, medicines, and other basics will fall, and wages will purchase more. Everyone will feel better, as if they'd had a wage increase. <coughs> Existing foreign currency debt would be repayable with fewer and fewer Bahamian dollars. Exports will, of course, become more expensive, and that includes tourism. Tourism will need to focus more and more on higher income tourists. They demand better services and will have to retrain our workforce accordingly. Canada had to make similar adjustment when its currency jumped 50% rather abruptly. The alternate is less appetizing. The thought of remaining tied to the US dollar and allowing the Bahamian dollar to join the US as it heads toward oblivion is, I think, a very frightening picture. After having enacted the required legislation, there will still be an imbalance that needs to be addressed. Because at the moment of conversion, the Bahamian banking system will not have sufficient cash to meet withdrawals. Now, but we in the Bahamas are very fortunate. Because the Central Bank of the Bahamas has been very careful in the supervision of the banks. And this shortage of cash can be easily resolved. At the end of last year, December 31st, 2010, the bank said, we had total deposits of one billion, we had total demand of one billion, two hundred five million, thirty-three thousand is the total bank deposit. Cash in the bank is a hundred and eleven million, which is rather a substantial difference. And we also have five hundred and eighteen million on deposit at the central bank, the bank state. So there's a shortfall of 573,210,000. The banking system has uh, got to sell 518 worth of deposits as the banks hold one better than 93. I'm sorry, I've left one out of here. We own in treasuries one billion and 93 million in treasuries. And so we convert 518 of that. We convert 573 of that and return the 518 plus the cash already in the bank. And then we have 1,205,033 in the, the bank and 1,200,000. Do you follow that? In the man department. You with me? Okay. Then you're sound. You also have remaining 4,754,721,000 which covers time deposits or savings accounts, what we would call, what I would call the investment sector. 